it's Pilot Bambi and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's healthy and happy and taking care of themselves. I thought today would be the perfect day to sit down and tell you guys a bit about how I film and edit my videos. I've been getting tons of questions asking how I do it and I must say in the last eight months that I've been on YouTube I have learned so many new things and I would really like to share all these tips and tricks with you. Before we get started, I have something very exciting to tell you. I hit the 50,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. And in return for that, I would like to give away a year free subscription for Sky Demon, my favorite navigation tool. So make sure to watch to the end to find out how to win this prize. And I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so we hung up the first in-flight camera and I'm currently using the GoPro 8 Black. It's a perfect little camera, really high quality, and since it's so small, it doesn't obstruct too much of your vision. I really like using a GoPro suction mount, similar to this one, to stick on the windscreen and then once it's stuck, I don't have to look back at it during my flight. It's really important to not have a increased workload when you're filming. And that's one of my biggest tips. I mean, I would recommend filming flights to so many people. It's so fun to look back at your flights and also learn from your mistakes. But the most important thing is to not have any issues with your cameras, with them falling off, not being secured correctly, because that's only going to increase workload and decrease your safety. So first one, I always like hanging up in the middle of the windscreen so that I can still see my compass and that I can look around me and see all the other planes. I like using a second mount for another angle. I actually have a, another GoPro 8 which I like using for that and then I have the GoPro Max 360 with two cameras, one on each side and this one films in full 360. You might have seen me using it in my Girls Go Flying video and in my helicopter videos. The cool thing about this is because it films 360 and you can edit it in 360, it kind of seems like I have a camera on a gimbal and you can really see what's going on around the cockpit and what's going on outside. So another really big recommendation is using the GoPro Max. It is an amazing camera. You can use an editing software from GoPro that allows you to edit in 360 and choose the shots that you want to use. The downside is it takes a little more skill to edit with that. It's quite simple, but takes up a lot more time. But the end result is really, really nice and I like it a lot. So I'll be using the GoPro 360 more often for sure. Whoa, shit, man. You might be thinking, oh wow, the GoPro 8, that's quite an expensive camera or um, I just want to try it out. I've never used a GoPro before. Well then, I mean, I started with a GoPro 3, um, even the older GoPros, and they're really good. They do the job. The quality is a little less than the GoPro 8, but they're still perfect for in-flight video. Um, the only downside I have with the GoPro 3 is it overheats a little quicker in the summer and the battery life is not as good. I've had a few problems with in-flight audio where I connected the GoPro 3 and after a few minutes of filming, I lost my cockpit audio, which is awful because I want to show you guys my entire flight and then sometimes it cuts out halfway. So that's why I went on to the new GoPro 8 and I haven't had a problem since. So, I mean, start off with one of these and you can always upgrade and see what you like. This is just my tips on it. So uh, you can take from it what you want. Besides the GoPro suction mounts, I also have a few sticky mounts, which I really like. I have one of these. Well, they're all really simple. They're just from different brands, mostly from GoPro. And there's a sticky on one side and the connector where you can slip in your GoPro on the other side. My favorite spots are up here or in the heli. I actually use another mount. Let me get down here, which is a bar mount. And there's a bar in the back of the R44 I can connect it to, connect the camera, and then I can just have all these cool angles. Tropical, travel, final, runway, sit or niner. Let's talk about outside camera angles. Um, this is kind of a tricky subject to talk about because it's not completely legal to film from outside on the wing in some countries and on some aircraft. I do know that certain aircraft are certified to have outside cameras be mounted and it also depends per country. The aircraft behind me, I don't use outside camera angles because it's not allowed, uh, but I'll use it as an example to how I have stuck up stickies in previous years or on previous flights. 
in different countries. I know that there are other YouTube pilots that have different ways of connecting cameras on their wings, such as Trent Palmer, who have way more experience and know what they're doing. So you can look at their channel for more information too. But I like using the stickies either on the end of the wing or closer to the strut. Now we can go on to in-flight audio recording. That's where I get the most questions from because people do really enjoy recording the cockpit audio and ATC radio work. Um, I actually use the in-flight camera recording cables, which are these really cool. This is the plug-in for fixed wing. I use the Bose headset. I love this headset and I am so, 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 so happy with it. I use it for all my flights except for helicopter flying, which I'll get to in a second. And as you know, you have the two plugs. One goes into the recording cam and these go into the socket for the aircraft. And then um, you actually connect the USB-C or mini USB cable to the camera and then boom, you can record. Um, you do have to check and test it out on the GoPro before going on your big video flight to make sure that it's actually recording and if you have the right settings on your camera. Another thing, it's really important to know which connection your camera needs. I'm currently using the USB-C connector for the GoPro 8 and upwards. And then we're back on the GoPro 3. This one has a different connector to it, so you can't use the USB-C. And I actually have another cable that connects uh, with the Hero 3. I don't have it here with me and it's from another brand, but you can get them online just looking up in-flight camera audio recording. What I also learned is that fixed wing and helicopter comms are quite different. We have a different connection. Instead of having the two pins in a fixed wing, we have a different setup in the helicopter and then there's actually two different types of connectors which i also learned about and um that means you have a different audio cable so again i have a another in-flight audio cable from inflightcam.com with the usb-c connector for the gopros and then the helicopter version nice nice okay so there's a few more gadgets back here that i'd like to touch on firstly a handy cam that i love using i'm gonna go get it for a second it's this one. I have been using it on a lot of my adventures. It has a 60 time zoom, which I absolutely love. It's perfect for filming flights in the circuit or for example, aerobatics flights that are quite high up. So you can zoom all the way in and it's just a perfect little camera to take along on flying adventures. When you land somewhere, you can take it out and film what you're doing. So this has been great. The only thing is you have to have quite a stable hand. It does stabilize the film, but I always move too fast when I'm filming, so gotta learn how to improve that. Lately, I've also been trying out some flying with this camera from Canon. I use it to film a bit of my footage like we have been using outside today. It has a Rode mic on it. I have seen that with the Handycam and with the GoPros, there's a lot of wind buffeting and it's just really awful with editing and that's why I am testing this out. Another thing that I have loved using recently is the DJI drone. One thing is drones and aviation don't match so well. Lots of airfields don't allow you to fly with drones, of course, so please don't ever fly your drone at a busy airport. You'll get into a lot of trouble and it's very unsafe for other pilots. So um, I have mainly been using this in Guadeloupe and on St. Martin when we're going on day adventures. I hope to use it way more in future videos. And um, if you guys have any tips on what you guys wanna see other than aviation content, let me know because I have this really cool drone that I can use. Also, it's available on Gamma Express like all the other cameras. So if you're looking for something cool, especially in Europe, they have all the camera goods that you could possibly need. The last two things I'll show you have more to do about when you already have the camera footage. This is a amazing hard drive that I use to keep all my content. I actually have two of them to have a backup of all the footage that I have. And I'm not the uh, most organized person, but this has literally saved my life. It is a little card holder that holds all the SD cards that I use for my GoPros, for my Handycam, and for the drone. Have them all in one place. It has saved me a lot of trouble um, I have lost a few SD cards along the way um, and here in this Karuba card holder I can save all my SD cards and it is perfect. 
final note, I also got a few questions about how I edit my videos. I started off using iMovie. Um, I love iMovie. It's helped me through <laughs> the beginning stages of my aviation YouTube career. Um, for starters and for people that are just beginning, it's the perfect tool because it's really simple to use. The only downside is if you're using big high quality files and you're editing longer videos, longer than 10 minutes, um, iMovie wasn't the best option for me anymore, especially because I was making higher quality videos or at least trying to. So now I'm using Final Cut Pro. Um, it's almost as simple as iMovie and it works perfectly on Apple. So that's what I'm using and so far it's been really, really great. Um, there's a lot of tools out there, but I'm just sharing what have been my favorite so far. That was it for today. I hope these tips were useful. It's what I've learned so far and I'm sure I'm gonna learn more and more throughout the coming years of making YouTube content. I am having so much fun with it, getting to know all of you and just being able to share my passion for aviation in this way. And hitting the 50,000 subscribers was super awesome. So we are now at the point where I get to give away a year-long free subscription to Sky Demon. As some of you know, Sky Demon is one of the most amazing navigational tools mainly used here in Europe and I've been using it for basically as long as I've been flying. I love it a lot and I really, really want to share that with you guys. So I've been given the chance to give away a year-long subscription to a subscriber of mine. And to enter the giveaway, make sure to be subscribed to this channel, follow me on Instagram, and under this video, leave a comment down below of what your dream aviation adventure would be. Like where you'd want to go, how you'd see it, how long the trip would be, and who you'd bring along with you. So make sure to do that. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you very soon. Bye.